Welcome. Today we are going to be talking about research. So the first thing I want to do is show you the agenda for today about what we'll cover. We're going to focus on choosing a topic. We will brainstorm keywords and then we'll practice searching in Summon, which is the library's discovery tool. So this really gets straight to the point about how you find information within the library's resources. My name is Morgan. If you have any questions, you can always use the chat. And then Mari and Allison are going to do the second and third half of this presentation, but we'll be here to answer any of your questions that you might put in the chat. Or if you want to email us or contact us later, that sounds great too. So choosing a topic. This may be one of the hardest parts about research, but it is part of the process. So it's going to inform how you go about looking for information. It may change as you conduct your research, getting broader and perhaps more narrow as you do that research. And then it doesn't have to be finalized before you start researching. So you can get an idea, start researching, and then decide that you are ready to run a little bit, discover some information, and then you might come back and decide that you need to reshape that topic a little bit. That's normal because it's a recursive process. Unfortunately, research is not linear. You don't do them in steps or stages. Normally you will revisit certain stages um, recursively so that you can revise and improve how you find information. So three tips for choosing a topic. Uh, be curious, try to avoid picking something that you already know a lot about. Um, that gives you an opportunity to be flexible and learn more. Ask questions, start with basic questions like who, what, when, and where, and then you can build up to more complex questions like why and how. And then find an argument. The argument is often hidden within the conversation about this topic. So sometimes you look to do a little bit of reading and investigating to figure out where you fit within that conversation. So I'll say that it can be really challenging to even know where to start. So I'm gonna show you this really great database called Opposing Viewpoints. It's an excellent database and what it provides is the opportunity to sort of explore topics in a way that is organized and hopefully less overwhelming than if you're just trying to come up with a topic by yourself. So I'm going to go to the library's website. And I'm going to drop that link into the chat just so you can have it there too. You'll see here that we are on the home page. And the summon search is here. We're gonna come back to that. We're not gonna search that right now. The first thing we're gonna do is go to the databases tab and we will do the A to Z listing. We'll click on that and we'll get to the databases page. And I'll put that link in the chat as well. There you go. And when you're on this page, you'll see the all databases bar here. You can click on that and it will drop down. Because we're looking for opposing viewpoints, click on the letter O and there it is right here. Now this is gonna give you a little description, but we're gonna explore this a little bit so that you can see what's available to you. So one of the great things about this particular database is that there are lots of options for what you are interested in. So you can explore up here in the search bar. Maybe you already have an idea of what you wanna look for. You can also browse the issues, we'll come back to that, or you can look at the categories um, of issues and then kind of explore that way. So if you're interested in renewable energy, then th that's an option. If you're interested in youth sports, that's also an option. But you can choose based on a category that you like, you can choose based on something that you already know, or you can browse issues up here and see what is available for you. There's lots to choose from, but let's see, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna choose a topic up here to do the drop down menu and we'll pick energy environmentalism. 
And now you can see a little bit more focused. There's quite a large number of topics for you to choose from, but then you can decide out of the, the category that interests you, what topic interests you the most. So I think that I will pick sustainability. Now, if there is a topic or an issue that this particular database highlights, it will have a page dedicated to it. And when you look at that page, no matter the topic you look at, it is gonna pretty much be laid out in the exact same way. You will see sustainability or whatever topic it is up at the top, an overview that you can read more about. You'll see here, there's a big overview of some of that content about that topic, but also you have some main ideas, related subjects, um, and then an overview of what the conversation is. So this can help you to find keywords and it can help you to find an argument that you might want to contribute to. And then after you're done looking at the overview, you're exploring what's available on this particular topic, you'll see there's featured viewpoints, there's audio recordings, there's magazine articles, images, statistics, infographics. So there are tons of ways for you to learn more about this particular topic and explore the variety of resources available on this topic. So it can help you to decide what is the next best step for you as you find something you're curious about and then explore more information. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and let Mari take over and she will talk to you about keywords. All right, let me share my screen here. All right, I hope everyone can see that. So now that you've chosen a topic, you are ready to start planning for your research process. Sometimes even after you have chosen a topic, it needs to be narrowed down to better fit the scope of your assignment. Many of the categories and opposing viewpoints are extremely broad, like freedom of speech, sustainability, which Morgan showed you, domestic violence, pollution. There are some really big issues on there. For the purposes of your assignment, it's going to be much easier to focus on just one aspect of a controversial issue, especially if you need to propose a solution than trying to tackle the whole thing. Keywords are a controlled vocabulary that will likely turn up the most useful search results for your topic. Keywords are words that a database will be likely to understand. I'm sure some of you have tried to just type into a database the way you might type a question into the Google search engine, and the database most likely had no idea what you were talking about. Hi, Mari. Oh. I think you might have the, uh, the shared screen is, is not sharing, or am I missing it? Um, can you not see it? Um, I see you. There we go. You see it now? I am so sorry. All right. Well, that was the <laughs> same slide that I was on, so not missed anything. Thank you. Thank you. So Allison is going to give you some strategies for creating search strings later on in this presentation. But before we can do that, we need to list the words that we'll use in those search strings. The databases you will search are full of peer-reviewed journals and articles. You want to pick vocabulary about your topic that the writers of those articles use. Don't worry, you don't have to be an expert on your topic to find what you need. There are other databases that can help you with that, and we'll look at one of them in just a moment. So let's say that I've decided I want to research honeybees and other pollinators and how to protect them. We've all heard, I'm sure, that pollinator populations are declining. It's a very serious and complex problem, and I want to find out what I can do to help solve it. My next step is to create a research question and start jotting down some ideas for different things I could explore in my project that relate to pollinator protection. 
So here are the two parts of my research question. How does pesticide use affect pollinator populations? And how can individuals protect pollinator species? And you can see that uh, under each of these, I've, I've listed down some of the questions that I might want to focus different paragraphs in my paper on. Do non-insecticide pesticides really hurt bees? Are there other reasons populations are in decline? How long has this problem been occurring? And when I talk about solutions, I'm going to look into, are there organizations for bee protection? Can citizens make a difference? And are citizens responsible or just corporations? Now I can start brainstorming on my list of keywords. It's good to have a lot of keywords because as you search, you may find some keywords produce better results than others. Sometimes it's hard to know until you get started. You might also find that the focus of your topic may change. You may find a lot more information about one thing than another, or you might find that one aspect of your topic is a lot more interesting to you than another. Here are some things you can keep in mind. Do any of these words or phrases have synonyms that researchers may use? Related words, spelling variations, plural versus singular, or brand names? Here's an example of a keyword brainstorming sheet. At the top, I have my research question. And within that question, I've isolated three beginning keywords that appear in the question. So my question is, again, how does pesticide use affect pollinator populations? And what can individuals do to protect pollinator species? My keywords here are pesticide, pollinator, and individual. I've created lists for each of them. You can see that under pesticide, I've li listed different categories of pesticides, chemicals, and brand names, and phrases. Allison will explain more about phrases later. For pollinator, I've done the same thing. Different types of pollinating insects, in case I end up not wanting to focus specifically on bees. And the family names of some of those. And then the scientific names. Apis mellifera is the scientific name for a honeybee. And Bombus impatiens is a bumblebee. So sometimes scientists will use those in their papers instead of the common names. And I wouldn't want to miss out on those just because I didn't think of looking up what the scientific names for these insects are. And for individuals, I thought up some names for all the different types of people who might be involved with or have a particular viewpoint on the pollinator protection crisis. Conservationists, uh, entomologists, different types of scientists, citizens and farmers and gardeners and beekeepers. Beekeepers have a lot to say about the, the issue as well. Now there is a tool I can use in one of the databases if I'm having trouble coming up with these words. It is the topic finder in Gale Academic One file. I'm going to show you that now. So here's our library homepage. And down here in this box with the tabs on it, we're going to click on databases since Academic One file is a database and we're going to go to the A to Z listing. Now there are quite a few different ways actually that you could use our website to get to this database, but this is the one I'm showing you today. So if you click on all databases A through Z and scroll down a little bit, it's gonna be your third one in the list here, Academic One File. Sometimes you'll see it listed as Gale One File. And we're gonna open that up. Now, this, uh, since this is a Gale database, this will look similar in, in um, the way it's laid out to the Opposing Viewpoints database, which is really great because if you figure out your how to find your way around one of them, you'll be able to find your way around the other quite easily. You can see they do have a, a browse topics list, same as Opposing Viewpoints, and they do search many of the, the exact same articles. But what I want to look at down here are the search tools. And the topic finder, the one all the way on the left, is the one that I'm going to show you today. So I'm going to put one of my keywords into this topic finder here. I'm going to use the word honeybees and see what comes up. I hope this is loading well enough for you to see here. Um, so you're going to see all of these different uh, categories that come up and many of these things can be used as keywords. Remember we said Apis mellifera was the scientific name for a honeybee. So if I click there, it will 
zoom in a little bit and you can see all of these other different categories. And as I click on these, you're going to see up here on the right, a list of all the articles containing these keywords will come up. So you can start your research process right here with, with this topic finder. You can see that chemicals is also an option if I wanted to click on chemicals. That's going to bring up um, bees relating to chemicals. Here is one, in fact, new chemicals and chemistry study results from U.S. Department of Agriculture. They're um, evaluating insecticide toxicity. So that looks like something that could possibly be related to my topic. And if you get stuck, if you go in too deep, if you want to come back out again, there's a little reset here and that will take me back um, to my first search, my first keyword here. I'm going to try one more. I'm going to put in pollinator. There we go. Uh, bees is an entire category on its own. Pollination services, ecology. So you're, you can see that a lot of these, the, the role probably is going to have something in it as well. Um, just putting in single keywords can sometimes generate a lot more keywords and key phrases. Um, in Allison's portion, she will show you how to do this in more complex ways and to come up with more complicated search strings that will yield um, probably more interesting and more specific results. But I just really like the topic finder here. If you ever get stuck, if you just need some ideas, if you just want to click your way through until you find a result that is helpful to you, that's a, that's a really good place to start. All right, so I will pass it on to Allison now. Hello, uh, let me share my screen real quick. And where is it, share screen. Can everybody see that? Yes. Okay. So to begin searching summon, Let's see, we're going to talk about that. So you've got your topic and you've got your keywords, so what's next? So now it's time to find information through Summon. Summon is our broadest search tool. It searches many of our databases all at once. It's the library's discovery tool. It helps you discover the information that you want. But first, let's go over some search tips. So we're gonna talk about Boolean operators real quick. Our databases use, um, they don't search like Google. They don't use phrases to search. What we use are um, phrases in parentheses and Boolean operators. So you can't just say, find me all the information about honeybees like you might be able to in Google. In a database within the library, you'll need to be a little more formal. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. The Boolean operators were, um, they weren't invented by this mathematician, but they're based on the math that he invented, he invented symbolic logic. Um, and basically, he found a way to incorporate words into math. So what we're going to use is and or not parentheses and quotation marks. So in my example, um, I used honeybees and pollen. Honeybees is a phrase. So I put it in quotation marks. I'll talk about that in a second. When you want to search for two terms together, you want them both to appear in your results. You might use and. And is going to show you, as in this example, this is honeybees and this is pollen. The results you're going to get back when you search for honeybees and pollen is just this little sliver in the middle and narrows and refines your search. More, think of it as more. It, it's gonna show you honeybees or pollen, so it's gonna show you everything with honeybees and everything with, about pollen and everything that they share in common. So more, or is gonna return more results. If you use not, Say you want to, all the 
results about honeybees, but you don't want to talk about pollen. Let's say you wanted to talk about another aspect of honeybees. So you're getting a lot of results with pollen. That's not what you're interested in. So you want to exclude that word and all those results. So you would use honeybees, not pollen, and that will give you just honeybees with no pollen represented. And try to remember to make these words capitalized because if you don't, it's going to think it's a search term and not a Boolean operator. So you definitely want the operation to be completed, not just to search in the text for the word. Parentheses. Let's say you were getting, you wanted to look for pollen or nectar because you wanted to broaden the search. Remember, or means more. You wanted to broaden your search, but you wanted that done first and then honeybees applied. You could write it out. This is where the math comes in and put it in this order. And what's going to happen is the databases are going to start be searched with the items in parentheses first and then the other items applied second. So in this case, you'll get pollen or nectar, that's more, and then honeybees will be applied after that. So you'll have all of these results plus this result is just this little sliver and this little sliver right here. So searches within parentheses are done first, in this case, or retrieves records with pollen or nectar first, then the and equation with honeybees is applied after. And this is what the results would look like if you didn't have parentheses in it. It would do honeybees and pollen, which would give you this little sliver right here, honeybees and pollen and narrows, so you'd have this little sliver and then it would apply the or and bring you all the results, results for nectar, even if it didn't um, have honeybees or pollen in the results. So you get this result and this result. So the and would be done first and you'll see some of the results would not have honeybees and pollen in it, even though that might not be what you wanted. When you have multi-word phrases, you want the search results to come back to you with the words in order and used together. So you do that by using quotation marks. This first example here is not using quotation marks. So you'll see what the database returns. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna look for, with this search, it's gonna look for honey, bees, honey bees, and then it's gonna apply pollen. So you'll get results that include things with honey and pollen, bees and pollen, and honeybees and pollen. So your results will not be as precise as you probably want them to be. Searches containing multi-word phrases without using quotation marks will return results with those words used anywhere in the text and not always when the words are situated next to each other. To eliminate that, you can put multi-word phrases in quotation marks, and then it won't return results that don't have them in the correct order side by side. So in this correct use, you'll see honeybees and pollen. Here's the honeybees, here's the pollen result, and it will only return to you that which they share because you're using and. Using quotation marks around multi-word phrases returns fewer and more accurate search results. So let's try a search. And we'll go to the library's website. <clears throat> so let's look up honey, please, and pollen. you see you've got 2,890 results. And with or, sorry, I didn't have it in capital letters.
see how my result numbers went up significantly with the or. And let's try not. Almost 50,000 results mention honeybees without pollen. So another thing you wanna remember when you're searching in the summon is that many of your assignments are gonna request peer reviewed items. So to get peer review, you could click right there and that will again, narrow your results to exactly what you're required to have for your assignment. And if you need a journal article, you can narrow it even further by clicking on content type right here. The left hand side is your friend and you see how the selectors are up here, just in case you need to remove any of them at any time. We're still at 8,800 results. So let's narrow by publication date. Let's say your instructor required something more recent. Let's say the past three years, you can choose the last three years publication date. And now we're down to 1900 results. That's still a lot. So if you wanted to refine by discipline or subject term, you could do that as well. Let's say ecology. Now I have 276 results and they are sorted by relevance. So the ones at the top will be the ones that are more relevant to your paper. You could also extend this string. I need these not pollen and nectar. You can always add words to refine it even more. Now you have very precise results. And within those <clears throat> results, you'll see the title, the author, the volume number, and you can have a quick look at it. When you click quick look, it opens on the side. You get a copy of the abstract and also some subjects that are within the article. So you could go down a side rabbit hole or an, if when Morgan was talking, you were trying to refine your topic, these subjects might be able to help you find a topic that interests you for your paper. Also keep in mind that if you want to save these for later, these results, you can bookmark it and that puts it right up here at the top. Let's say you have two, two bookmarks. If you click on bookmark, you'll see them here. You can print that or email it to yourself or you can export them to a citation keeper. So Tarot is a free one that you might look into. And I do recommend saving these results before you close out because these do clear out within a certain amount of time or if you close your browser. Go back to your results. Let's say you just wanted this one. You could always email it to yourself right here. Or you can, again, send it to Zotero or any report keeper that you have. And another interesting thing you can do from this location is you can cite the item. Click on the parentheses. <clears throat> and from here, you'll see a drop down menu. Let's say you wanted to put it in MLA form. Pick MLA, and it will put the citation into MLA form for you. Now, this is a great example to look at because please double check your citations when it makes them. Because in this example, you see you have three authors and that is not standard MLA format. MLA format wants, if you have more than two authors to have the first author and then um, et al. So just double check these citations because they are not perfect, but 
they are a great starting point to help you figure to remind you what to put in parentheses, what to put in italics, and what to include in general. And again, you can print these out, you can copy and paste them into your paper, or you can export them from here as well. So remember, you can refine on the left. These are your articles. Here's how you save them. And here's how you find your quick look. Hey, Allison, I have a question for you. Okay, go ahead. Um, so I get a lot. I get the question a lot, why do you have to capitalize the Boolean operators? Can we just mention that real quick? Okay, let me show you an example. It might not work with and, so I'm gonna use or. When you do a search just like this without the capital, it's going to search for the word or inside the article too. So you only have 90, for results with that. But if you capitalize it, it becomes the Boolean operator. It's going to know that you just want anything with honeybees and anything with pollen. So let's look and see how that changes. Now you've got 1,027 results. So the difference is when it's small letters, it's looking for the word in the copy. And when it's capitals, it's actually doing a function. Does that make sense? Thank you for the explanation. You're welcome. And that's it for today. I just wanted to conclude by giving you some contact information. I'm Allison Sills. And Mari Wimberly, we're both at Lee County. Morgan is at Harnett. Dana Haven is at Chatham. Or you can always email us at the library at cccclib at cccc.edu. And remember, you can always book us for an appointment um, on our LibCal. We're always here for you. Are there any other questions?